did health and nutrition, and using supplements was minimal. Unfortunately, now we have chemicals, GMOs, herbicides, and pesticides that can be quite lethal in the name of our food supply and, of course, the ever-loving dollar. Supplementing our diets can be very important to stay healthy. Cleansing from daily intruders to the body might be critical. Live strong and take charge. Log on to GetTheTea.com. Our herbal tea is a great way to cleanse from intruders. Our supplements is a great way to maintain and improve your health. When your health is not up to par, go to GetTheTea.com. No GMOs, no fillers, and organic. And very helpful in keeping you at the top of your game. Life is too short to feel, uh, you know what I mean. Stay in the game, at the top of your game, with GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Again, GetTheTea.com. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. Oh. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For years, the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station has been your contact for live UFO paranormal talk radio worldwide. Bringing you the top names and research and investigations seven nights a week. Our listeners connect to the KGRA on various platforms like TalkStream Live, TuneIn, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and many more. Now, you can stream your favorite paranormal talk radio shows with our new fully integrated custom KGRA mobile apps for Android and iPhones. Listen to your favorite paranormal talk shows from any mobile device 24-7 free with smartphone or tablet. Utilize custom features to access news, show pages, archives, contests, events, and live interactive chat room. Set, set show notification alerts and never miss your favorite live programs. All free and available to download in Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You're listening to the KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. And now, only on KGRA Radio, this is the Starborn Connection. Wise. Good evening and welcome everybody to another Starborn Connection radio show from across the USA, from around the world, from everywhere in the solar system. We're glad you're here across the Milky Way and way out into interstellar space. Turn your radios up loud. We've got some good stuff tonight. The Starborn Connection has arrived and all of you are welcome to come into our virtual studio out here in the ether. I am your host, Michael Austin Melton, and tonight the Starborn Connection will cover a very uh, a few very important things. I've got a another transmission from uh, the extraterrestrial biological entity Oli, sent to me by Ilona Podraska from her sister Ivana. Um, then we're going to talk to Ray Hernandez. He is the co-founder of FREE, the Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Experiences. And extraterrestrial means any kind of contact outside of our human experience and consciousness. So, uh, let me welcome my co-host, Julia Weiss. How you doing, Julia? 
Good. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. So excited about the show. Ah, oh, yeah, me too. I had a rough couple of days there. I got picked up some sort of a virus, and it just drained me of energy. This is the first day I've been back on my feet, really. Oh, Bill, better. how you? How you doing, Bill? Doing great. And just a quick thought and prayers to all those affected by Hurricane Maria. And Absolutely. let's not forget all those affected by Irma in Florida and, of course, the Harvey uh, victims in Texas, Louisiana, and the surrounding area. So I'm just going to just say, because I, I've done it, if you can uh, donate to the cause to help those in need right now, I'm sure it's going to be greatly appreciated. So if you can, please do. Yes, please do. I have too. And, uh, you know, it, we all need to jump on this. Uh, Puerto Rico, for end to end, they need our help. They're evacuating cities. Dams are breaking. It's not a good scene. Uh, so they can use all the help they can get. Indeed. All right. Now, contact with UFOs and alien species. And, you know, this includes all levels of close encounters from CE1 to CE4. And, of course, CE5, alien abduction, they represent just a small slice of the pie when it comes to contact with non-human intelligence. As a matter of fact, consider this. Our alien friend, Oli, whom you hear about most every week, comes from the 12th dimension. Now, who or what resides in the dimensions 4 to 11? I mean, they exist if he's from the 12th, Right. And perhaps there are many more dimensions we know nothing about. I heard a physicist one time tell me that dimensions might be the size of the head of a pin, and we don't even see them. Well, to sum it up, there are many types of contact and travel through dimensional space. Sometimes they come to us, and other times we travel to them via consciousness. Now, Ilona and Ivana and the EBE Oli... Uh, have a system of communicating using a device much like a Ouija board. Ivana gets detailed messages by way of the contact of consciousness between the two. But tonight we're going to discuss the different types of contact that we are aware of and the mission and research of an organization we are all familiar with. It's a long... I, I always... I'm always afraid I'm going to get tongue-tied when I say it. The Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Experiences. In my mind, they have done more research and analysis than any two or three organizations combined in this field. I think they are on the road to, of real discovery, and I'm proud to be associated with them. Ray Hernandez, once again, is our guest. But first, let me uh, tell you a little bit about this communique. Uh, from Ilona and Ivana. It was an experimental session. Uh, she says it was pretty profound uh, because uh, Oli was asked questions submitted by certain researchers directly in contact with the sisters. Uh, so let me get my translation here. There's, there's one question that, that came out kind of muddled, but uh, the, the answer is here, and it's really, really like super interesting uh the only part i got is yes brett i as i see what i said as a statement i asked why some tribes or people can communicate he said uh then he then brett said did you uh did you ask oli for rocket propulsion and oli answers yes the technology they gave to Eisenhower. E.T. gave it to German scientists. Hmm. Well, to move on, Oli opens up, of course, with his usual uh, salutation, Alleluia, O.O. Uh, he says, new space is being developed in the rocket system and in the fuel system, which means uh, the, the way I saw it, it, it they're putting together new rocket systems and new fuel for space travel. Um, he goes into a whole bunch of, um, I guess, alien conceptualizations of frequencies and everything, which I had a hard time kind of putting together. Uh, but he does say here that America is exposed to a large fuel space in New Mexico, 
a colossus is reserved for the renewal of this technology. Uh, a colossus might – the first thing that hits me is that it's a big space. Um, he says, everywhere from New Mexico and under Arizona, the country's violent interference in the underground of the planet. There were discharges for the purpose of new technologies, but it's safe already. We do not call time, but in your space, it was created on August 6th of your year 2017. So very recent. Uh, they Maybe they made some discoveries we'll hear about. I don't know. He goes on to say, it's time for declassification for the government, both underground and on the ground. People have to notice what's going on over their heads. We are an advanced civilization from another universe. Brett, the researcher that asked the original question, does not know what kind of universe. It's another space, uh, another space for humanity that is invisible. But we're going to get you into your space with our ship. We are connected to the headquarters of Ivana and other similar few people. That's funny. He calls their house the headquarters. Headquarters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know. He's, he can be pretty funny too. Uh, but we're going to get you into space. Right, right, right. We are connected to the headquarters of Ivana and other similar few people. Um, so he's in contact with a couple of other people uh, about all of this stuff. They were ben benevolently – it's spelled wrong here – benevolently elected. The foundation is given by the soul. Space uh, paralorite of previous that, – that to me I can't make out. Um, I have already told you about the development of rocket fuel and our space where we are. We have no constellation in your space. It's on the far side for your eyes. We cannot see their uh, 12th dimension. I was going to say, as part of this whole thing, that the decrease in carbon levels in proto-neutrons is high. Um, we should ask maybe uh, Neil deGrasse about that. Uh, we cannot answer much more to answer everything in detail. He says our intelligence always responds in hard terms, but in a clear plane. Only people have different views on one issue. We respond vigorously, even if it is a matter of secondary information. We do not want to go back to one thing more than once. How many how, how many times have you heard somebody say, I'm not going to repeat this again. Listen carefully. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> That's what that says to me. It's a little uh, annoyed with the same question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, uh, they get a little bit annoyed with we inferior human beings here. Uh, so let me see. Okay, another scientist and journalist – Mr. Muller, I'm not sure who that is, has a few questions, and he asks, how many elementary constants are there in the universe? And Ali says, the elementary constant is a part within space. They are like grains of dust, as you people say. They are particles. The elements are covered in the universe everywhere. It affects your planet's surface. Managing the gravity rate in the outdoors. Next question. Uh, now that, that was, you know, that's what he said. Next question was, what are the relationships between electricity and gravity? Oli answers. Gravity is related to the elementary parts of the earth and electricity is their discharge. The danger gives gravity in a wide spectra in your space. And uh, this is really fascinating uh, coming up, uh, the uh, terms that he uses. Some souls pressed into the human body structure can manipulate the gravitational points in evolution differently. Some souls overcome gravity, but not all souls come from one dimension. That's interesting. Souls are pressed into our body. Interesting. 
Okay, the third question uh, Mr. Mueller asks, and I think this is kind of a trick question. He says, where is the north in the universe? And Ali just comes right back. North is not determined in space. It's the vacuum of the universe. The north and its three other parts determine the direction and balance of your planet as a landmark. Now, and he, he got, goes on. Ancestors from the North America used stones to determine the direction and constellation and the solar system with the moon, determining the balance of the earth and its parts. Your civilization uses a compass, but it does not follow the cycle of parties, whatever that is, just as your ancestors used it before. Yes, for us, the little question of whether it was given in the sense of where the north is on your earth, that is clear. Weird for you. The universe is you, too. Your earth is in the universe. So... Uh, there's a, another question here about hydrogen sulfide, but you know I'm I'm just going to skip over that because I don't understand it, and I don't think anybody wants to sit there and think about that. Uh, okay, there's another researcher. Researcher Alberto Laluc has a question about the three finger humanoids from Nazca in Peru. This is a great answer, and it, boy. It, it really opened my eyes a little bit. Yes, simple answer to a simple question, Oli says. They are our neighbors in our space. Their ancestors had already known and developed their homes underground and near the ground in Nazca, but it failed. Your people were not created at that time. There were only other species of animals Uh on the planet, which our neighbors also made attempts in development. Our neighbors did not have a human species at that time before your civilization arose. They, our neighbors, are ahead of us. They are one light year from us. What do you think of that, Julia? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So they were... They're not, I'm not done reading yet, but yeah, I'll take your question. Okay, so <laughs> what I'm getting is... Their civilization are neighbors of Ali's, and they came to Earth, and before, before we us. got here? Yeah, before us, right. Okay, so can I and just they, tell you that Guy, not, you know, this could be nothing, I don't know, but Guy MTV did the DNA test. Really? And the DNA tests came out human, um, and I think the thing was like 900 years old or I don't think it was like prehistoric. I think it was, but that doesn't mean anything because no. if we're related to the stars, if our if we're created by the star people, then of course our DNA is going to be the same as theirs. You know, there might be other links in there. Right. So just because it says human, we could test a a, a, neat, a like let's say a Palladian, and we test it, and it's similar to ours. They could be our ancestors, which I think they are in, in some, you know. So that, but of course, also, you have, I, I don't know if they had marrow in the bone or, car, you need carbon, you need. Well, for um, DNA testing? You, well, yeah. for, for time to date it. Yeah. Uh, you need some sort of carbon. Uh, but the DNA <sighs> testing, I think, did come from the marrow. I think there was some marrow, mm -hmm. but um, so it's really confusing. And of course, you don't know if that is what they want you to think. Oh, it's human. It's just a different, like, you know, we had Neanderthals living the same time we're living. So, so it could be, we, I believe personally, and I've read it in other places, uh -huh. and I resonate with it, that there might have been four or five different human races living at the same time. Well, they've been for there have been uh, what six? This is I, yeah, considered the sixth lot. extinction. Yeah, and but I so they're you know created by the star people. So um, the DNA question is, you know, yeah, it might have said human, but so will a Palladian and so will a Syrian. I mean, um, because there are creators, they used our DNA. Very so very interesting. Maybe yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's all I'm getting. Three-finger humanoids. 
Yeah, uh, you know th- that alone is different from us. But yeah, I think the I think the general assumption is is that you know they tried to settle, they they didn't do well. Um, you know it, the habitat of Earth wasn't conducive to their survival at the time, uh, and and they're neighbors of Oli's race, so they must be in the twelfth dimension as well. He talks about. Uh, uh, Talks, he says that the war between the religions is evil. And the only thing I can think of is, um, you know, the Christians and, and Muslim uh, battles that are going on in the Middle East right now. I, Oli, have to lead you through the protective system packaging. Which, I don't know where that came from. Some, question, some questions, he said, may harm you. Uh, now, I don't know who Gary Walton is, but he says Gary Walton is composed in two codes of privilege. Um, we were given the job to get in and see him. I guess I think that's out of place. Uh, they're talking about the researcher, Brett, and they're, they say he has a thick wrapper of soul. That's why some people uh, – through Yvonne and the names cannot ever be identified if they have a thick package, thick body energy, thick oh, packaging. Okay. I, I think maybe he's talking about fat people like me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, oh thick pack, yeah, thick packaging. That's. Uh, I think that's how I'm going to describe myself from now on. Um, <laughs> uh, so he says, uh, Eba. Have you connected to Brett? Yes, I have. He knows the question about drive and other things in one. Now, I don't know where this is coming from. I'm just reading it. Uh, all he knows that Brett gave him a question he knew. He knows about the question. He examines our true identity. Now, let me move on a little bit here. Not a whole lot more. Um now, this is very fascinating. This is how it winds up, and, and I had to laugh. Uh, there's, there's another person that gives a question to uh, Oli, but he uses a very, very strange language. Um, it, it's Salia Kaza Kuta Bayi Kaza Maziliana, you know, going on like that. And anyway, Oli answers... Oli now heads to the ship system, the speed system, the shooter to tell you it's in your system. We are heading with our boat. Oli has to move away. Everything has been answered. Enemies. Hallelujah. Interesting, right? Yeah. Maybe that question was not something that uh, rang true for Oli and his uh, companions there in the 12th dimension. It sounds um, to me the guy was just saying gibberish to see what the response would be. Yeah, that, that's kind. Of, I don't know. I think that's kind that's of insulting. Getting, but I don't know. If I were only, I'd leave too. It's like, hey, you're not going to ask me good questions. I'm out of here. Um, okay, well that's the uh, the September third um, message from Oli, and we have more coming. All right, now. On to the business at hand. Tonight, we're going to talk with Ray Hernandez. Ray, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, how are you doing, and how is everything down where you live, my friend? Well, we're getting adjusted uh, to coast uh, Irma. Uh, there's still, uh, outside of every home, uh, a big, gigantic uh, dump of uh, trees and foliage. And it might take, actually, months to clean it up. And mm. everyone's backyard, their fences are down. All the trees are down, but at least uh, most, uh, the vast majority of individuals have electricity. Uh, school is open. Uh, supermarkets have food. <laughs> They've got milk uh, and other basic necessities. So uh, we're getting back to normalcy. I sympathize because I uh, I lived through Hurricane Andrew down there. I lived in I lived in Hollywood. And we didn't get the worst, but uh, we got beat up a little bit. Um, Kendall really got it bad. I, I just was in tears driving through that area there. 
uh, metal beams were twisted and torn, and uh, whole gas stations were just floored, completely eliminated from view, from sight, from existence, really. Well, anyway, tonight uh, I want uh, I wanted you to come on, uh, Ray, because you've got a uh, free book on the internet that talks a lot about um, uh, what you guys are doing there. It's called Beyond UFOs: The Science of Consciousness and Contact with Non-Human Intelligence. Um, and uh, if I may read the summary here, it says the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial and Extraordinary Experiences. That's good. Uh, or free, is a registered 501c3 academic research institute that is comprised of 11 retired PhD academics and lay researchers exploring what is consciousness by undertaking cross-comparative research on individuals that have had contact with non-human intelligences by way of contact modalities. This includes UFOs, near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, remote viewing, channeling, ghost spirits, hallucinogenic journeys, orbs, and side contacts, and whatever kind of contact we're not aware of yet. Um, Ray, tell me about uh, the book and its purpose. Why did, you, why did you put it out there for free? Well, it's not just me. It's... Um... Free is comprised of 11 individuals, um, half of them being academics. Uh, right. Six of them are retired professors, as you know, you know most of them. Right. Um, uh, we uh, have undertaken, uh, as you know, the world's first comprehensive academic research study on individuals that have had UFO-related contact with non-human intelligence. Um, no one has ever done this before. Uh, um Neither Dr. John Mack, uh, Bud Hopkins, uh, David Jacobs, uh, you name it. Uh, what we had circulating out there were basically um, individuals that were um, uh, hypnotically regressing individuals and then writing books about uh, the, the hypnotic regressions of what yeah. these individuals told them. Yeah, a lot of them were single case studies, kind of, you know, they, they didn't really look at a group. Correct. These were basically compendiums of, of, of case studies. And um, the, uh, this is not really academic, uh, true academic research, because there's so many biases. Because, for example, uh, David Jacobs' work is just the people that knocked on his door and say, can you regress me? So you really had no idea of what was really occurring out in this field. And then, um, you know, Whitley Strieber, uh, Jacobs, and Hopkins, uh, those are the individuals that actually uh, set the foundation for this field of, uh, of individuals that are having contact, uh, UFO-related contact with non-human intelligence. And this field became to be known as strictly abduction studies. Yeah. So uh, that was the mindset, and that has been circulating in the Internet and all over the place. And so um, when we started assembling free and we started assembling um, these individuals, um, almost each one of them has been working with experiencers for over 30 years. Everyone uh, understood that abductions is just one small component of this phenomenon, that it's uh, so much more complicated. But yet this story was um, never told because the data was never collected. Um, and so what we uh, attempted to do was the first ever comprehensive statistical uh, research study in multiple languages. And we collected uh, this uh, survey in um, uh, uh, over 115 different countries in these five major languages. That's incredible. Mm. And over uh, the last four years, we've accumulated uh, more than 5,000 responses. Whew. And uh, in, in the English language, we have uh, approximately 3,750 responses. Huge numbers. Spanish, uh, almost 700. German, uh, we're getting close to 500 responses. Um, you've had before uh, Julia Sellers, uh, she's coordinating uh, the research study in Slovak. Mm -hmm. And I believe um, she has about 75 in individuals 
that have taken our survey study in Slovak. Uh, we're just restarting again our French surveys and um, we're going to be starting in Chinese in about wow. a month or two. Wow, boy. Fantastic. And we have uh, researchers in, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, and several uh, researchers in different countries in mainland China. Wow, wow. So um, the, the, the findings that we have in our research study uh, pretty much contradict much of what's circulating in ufology. Uh, all these conferences, the, the MUFON conferences, the contact in the desert, the, um, the, the one that's in, done in Phoenix, Arizona, the International right. UFO Congress. Conference. Yeah. yeah, correct. All of these UFO conferences, um, the, the information that we've accumulated has never been presented to these conferences. Uh, they still have these traditional stereotypes of these abduction type of studies. Well, if I could go a little bit in terms of what is free and what we're doing, who is actually doing this study, Michael? The time like is that, yours, Ray. The time is thank yours. You. Go right uh, ahead, my friend. The, the organization was co-founded by four individuals. Uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, uh, who most people should know uh, that listen to your radio station. Um, he was the sixth man on the moon, Apollo astronaut. More importantly, he founded the Institute for Noetic Sciences, which is uh, the world's premier uh, research institute on consciousness, on ESP, and energy healing. Uh, Edgar founded that organization in 1973. Um, also, Edgar uh, pretty much is the father of, of the modern disclosure uh, movement. Um, Edgar also... Um, had been in contact with hundreds of experiencers, except that side of Edgar no one knew about. He never publicly uh, spoke about that side of him. Hmm. But uh, um, I'm sure you know of many individuals that have actually have been to Edgar's home <laughs> and have yeah. communicated with him over the years. So he did have that experiencer side of him. Uh, the other individual is Dr. Rudy Shields. Dr. Rudy Shields is... Uh, uh, a 75 year old now. He's an emeritus professor of astrophysics at Harvard University. He's one of the world's leading astrophysicists. And actually, um, he, uh, 15, no, 20 years ago, he uh, wrote a series of publications that uh, Sir Stephen Hawking was actually um, wrong on black holes. And his theories are now um, widely accepted. Um, and then the other one is Mary Rodwell, uh, one of the uh, world's premier researchers on contactees and, and ab abductees. And um, she wrote a book uh, roughly 10 years ago um, um, titled Awakening, which is uh, pretty much the only support book that's out there for experiencers. Mm -hmm. It's actually it's an experiencer support book. You know, how to handle, how do you as an individual handle um the stress of, 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 of uh, having abductions and having contact. Um, so the four of us started this organization. And um, over the four years, we've added uh, many different um, retired academic professors. Uh, one of them is Dr. John Klimo, who's the co-chair of, um, of our research study. And John taught research methodology uh, for 40 years, and he's known as one of the world's leading um, uh, academics on the paranormal. The other um, co-chair uh, of our research committee is Dr. Bob Davis, and Dr. Bob Davis uh, uh, was a professor at the State University of New York of neuroscience, and um, and he wrote a book several years ago, about five years ago, on, on UFOs. And shortly, he's going to be publishing a new book on life after death. Nice. And so um, uh, the two of them and myself uh, are the uh, co-chairs of the academic research study. We also have um, um, a PhD physicist from Princeton University, Dr. Claude Swanson. And uh, Claude wrote a book about 18 years ago titled The Synchronized Universe. And that book uh, is a book that explains... Uh, uh, the quantum physics of our universe and how all of the paranormal experiences are actually one experience. They're interrelated. Nice. And so, um, and then we have uh, um, 
Dr. Russell Scalpone, who is a PhD statistician, and he is a statistician for free. Uh, at one time, we had Dr. Leo Sprinkle, but Leo um, uh, requested to leave free about a year ago because he was 88 years old. Oh, boy. <laughs> and he, and he said, him. And he said yeah, Ray, yeah, I just can't keep up with you guys because we, we're, we're putting everybody to work. And, um, and, you know, he's 88 years old. So he says, look, Ray, I can't keep up with you guys. <clears throat> and so, um, and then the other individuals, the non-academics, uh, as I mentioned, Mary Rodwell, uh, Kathy Martin, uh, both of you know Kathy very, very well. Oh, yeah. She's one oh, yeah. of the world's leading researchers in this field. Rosemary Ellen Guiley, uh, she's written 62 books on the paranormal, different paranormal topics, from ghosts and spirits to the jinn to hauntings, uh, you name it. You know, she's written books on, on these topics. And then Giorgio Piacenza, who is a, a consciousness scholar. And um, uh, let me see who else is there on our board. I might miss a few, but, <laughs> but uh, basically... Uh, I would say more than half of these individuals are experiencers. Uh, we also have volunteers and, and friends of free. Uh, like, for example, you, know, you would be one of them, Michael, over the years. Um, Dr. Joseph Burks, um, Dr. Uh, Reverend Michael Carter, uh, Dr. Barbara Mango, who wrote her PhD on near-death experiences, uh, Brent Rains. Uh, who has uh, uh, written hundreds of articles in the fields of the paranormal and, and ufology, and I could go on and on. Uh, so uh, these are the people that are associated with free and, and are working to, to develop um, uh, uh, academic research in this field, which is uh, uh, totally lacking, if I might say. You, uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And then... Um, the, the, this research study that, that we've initiated four years ago has uh, four components. The first two components are quantitative in nature. Uh, yes or no, from one to five, from A to B, uh, to uh, A, B, C, D, or E, um, um, uh, 600 quantitative questions. As you know, we could have asked thousands. But even 600 people were complaining was just too much. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the next phase, the third phase, is a qualitative instrument where we asked uh, the individuals to write written responses to 70 open-ended questions. And some individuals actually wrote little books because they've had wow. so many experiences and they wrote all the details. Um, and uh, phase two are more of the hardcore experiencers, and the phase three are the major experiencers. Um, and, and for phase three, we've had almost 1,400 individuals mm. respond to all three phases. Now, for phase four, we're going to be taking the top 200 cases. And uh, um, you probably know some of these individuals. Uh, you know Chris Bledsoe, for example. You know, right. cases like Chris Bledsoe, uh, my friend Alberto uh, Fernandez here in, in Miami, who has had hundreds of contact experiences with uh, human-looking beings, uh, you know, hundreds of UFO sightings. Uh, uh, he and his wife and his daughter, you know, major type of experiencers. And um, um, so we're going to be interviewing 200 of them, and we're going to be administering a separate survey to in these individuals as well. Um, now, uh, all of our, our data, uh, we're going to be publishing in a book that uh, you had mentioned earlier. Uh, the name of the book is Beyond UFOs, The Science of Consciousness and Contact with Non-Human Intelligence. Now, Beyond UFOs is the main title because um, what we found out is that um, uh, this phenomenon uh, actually, the, the actual sightings of UFOs, the actual nuts and bolts aspect, is a very small component of it. And that's what mainstream ufology just does not understand. Right, right. That it's really about consciousness and, um, um, and, and then the relationship between consciousness and contact with non-human intelligence. So if, um, if you'd like, Michael, I could go into um, the... Um, the research study, and then talk about some of our academic articles. And I know that you read uh, one of them, and I think you enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, the, the, the title was um, 
the quantum hologram theory of consciousness. Yes, yes. And uh, the multidimensional nature of contact with non-human intelligence. I thought that was a great one. I really did. Yeah, it's it's really pioneering, but I think it went above the heads of of the vast majority of people, Michael. <laughs> to tell you quite frankly, but it it establishes uh, the paradigm of our work, um, and I could go into you know any of that. You know, you, you just ask me a question and I'll uh, I'll respond. Yeah, I I think I think it's great. I think you should go into it because you know the thing is, every time you've been on the show, this study has advanced a little more. Yes. Uh, I remember the first time you were on, you only had several hundred interviews, you know, but now you're you're up around 5,000 from 116 countries. Correct. Let me tell you, there's a lot of statistical significance in those numbers. So, you know, what you are writing is really, I mean, if it's not the answer, it's on the cusp of the answer. Correct. Uh, We're finally starting to get some some answers to some basic questions. And and in terms of statistical significance, uh, Dr. Scalpone, our statistician, he did um, uh, different types of statistical analysis um, uh, across geographic areas to see if the answers were consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, did the, the folks in Europe, was it consistent with, you know, uh, the United States, with Canada, with Australia? In, in the different languages. And what he found was that it was statistically significant, not only geographically, but via the languages. Wow. That's okay. So yeah, we're yeah. getting the same responses from the different geographic areas and the same responses in different languages. That is amazing. That yeah. is really awesome. And that basically just lends credence to the fact um, that these modalities, uh, the ones that we know of and the ones that we will eventually someday discover, uh, they're all in the same basket. I mean, consciousness is the basic tool of communication between people and wherever. Yeah, co co correct. It's um, um, just to get into now to, to a little bit more of the uh, – um, of the uh, – um, how should I say the um, the esoteric, the philosophical aspects of what we're doing? Um, That's my favorite. That's my favorite part. Most definitely, the theoretical <laughs> aspects of what we're doing. Um, everyone in our board, okay, uh, firmly accepts the hypotheses that that uh, contact with non-human intelligence needs to be studied as one phenomenon, not as separate and distinct phenomena. For example, the, the ufology folks, <clears throat> that's all they think about. It's just UFOs, okay? Yeah. It's like, and near-death experience? No, that has nothing to do with what we're doing. Out-of-body experiences? No, that has nothing to do with what we're doing, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, um, channeling, you know, like what you were talking about earlier in the show, mm -hmm. which is a channeled message? No, that has nothing to do with ufology, okay? We hypothesize that, that there are different, modalities, different um, me methods or manners where humans are piercing the veil and having contact with non-human intelligence. And that there are multiple, numerous similarities among all of these different contact modalities. Just between NDEs and UFO contact, we have identified easily over 40 um, commonalities. Wow. Same thing with out-of-body experiences. I recently gave a lecture to the uh, Boston uh, International Association for Near-Death near Studies on the commonalities between UFO contact, near-death experiences, and out-of-body experiences. Okay, uh, which you know it'll be a separate show just to, to discuss that. Uh, but we believe that near-death experiences, UFO contact, out-of-body experiences. The communication with ghosts and spirits, um, shamanic journeys via peyote or ayahuasca, etc., mystical meditation, channeling, remote viewing, that um, uh, all of these experiences uh, are actually one phenomenon. And the key to understand how it's all one phenomenon is this concept called consciousness. And there is a physics, you know, heavy-duty physics behind uh, consciousness, and that's what Dr. Edgar Mitchell and Dr. Rudy Shield had been working on for 25 years. And our paper that uh, I just read the title of, that it's also on our website. Uh, our website is experiencer.org. 
has a copy of that paper and very soon two additional papers. And all of these three papers are going to be published uh, uh, in academic research journals. One paper was already published in the Journal of Consciousness, and the other two papers are going to be published in the Journal of the Society for Scientific Explorations. And that's an academic research institute. Ah, uh, let me see. We have a uh, question posted. I'll ask it for uh, the gentleman here. With all the experiencers participating with the free organization research, would you say the majority are benevolent in nature and in regards to the late Edgar Mitchell's involvement with Zero Point Energy, trying to contact John Podesta before he unfortunately passed, do you think they are trying to help humanity protect the earth and could those in control and power? with investment in the current dependency of fossil fuel be preventing access to this energy? That's, well, there's, a, there's that's a mouthful. Many, many, there's many questions involved in there. <laughs> uh, regarding the, the, the positive aspects of uh, the experiences, I could go later on to, in terms of those details, but approximately 85% of these individuals have stated that their experiences were positive. That's one aspect of it. Um, in terms of zero-point energy, uh, Edgar was studying uh, zero-point energy um, not so much in terms of being able to utilize as an energy source because uh, uh, that was way, way down the road. But he was studying zero-point energy with uh, one of the um, um, innovators of, uh, of that field, uh, Dr. Bernard Heisch and Hal Putoff, uh, both from uh, associated with this, uh, Stanford that Edgar, when he started um, IONS, he, he was at the same uh, uh, Stanford Research Institute, and that's where he met these two academics. So um, uh, the reason he was studying zero-point energy with Hal Putoff and with uh, Bernard Heisch is because the zero-point energy fields are actually information storage devices and also information conveyance devices. So uh, that is how information is stored in our multiverse um and he also has another question i forgot in terms of um energy yeah uh, uh in, in uh, let's see and in regards to the late edgar mitchell's involvement with zero point energy trying to contact john podesta before he unfortunately passed do you think they are trying to help humanity protect the earth and could those in control and power uh, uh be uh, supporting our dependency on fossil fuel and preventing access to the zero point energy. Well, that that last aspect of uh, uh, there's no information associated with that, um, but I can tell you that the um, the the beings did t uh, inform 25 percent of the survey respondents uh, about the need to protect our planet, mm -hmm. about the uh, the um, the, the need uh, that we need to transition away from, uh, you know, from fossil fuels. Um, uh, so I can go into those details later on. Mm -hmm. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, Are there any other questions, Michael? Before I think I can... you can go. I think you can go on now. Okay. Can... Let me just tell you probably the, 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 the two most important findings from our research study. Number one. OK, um, uh, we duplicated approximately seven questions, 70 questions from um, a research study that Dr. Kenneth Ring did in 1988. Dr. Kenneth Ring is probably the world's imminent um, academic scholar on near death experiences. In 1988, he did uh, he published a book titled The Omega Project, and that book uh, is um, a review of a statistical study where he compared approximately 100 individuals that had near-death experiences with 100 individuals that had abduction type of uh, experiences. And what he found was that 85% of these individuals over time, over the long term, underwent a profound transformation, psychological transformation towards the positive. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And so I just, uh, that was one of the few statistical studies that had been done on experiencers. So I said uh, to the research team, let's duplicate that study and see what the results are. Okay. And what did we find? We found the same exact statistics. Okay. You that bet. 85% of the individuals that have had UFO related contact experiences, whether they were abduction or not abdu abduction types. 85% underwent a dramatic change towards the positive. Now, let me give you some que uh, questions. We asked them, let me give you the responses that were strongly increased, okay? Okay. My concern with spiritual matters, strongly increased. My desire to help others, my compassion for others, my appreciation of the ordinary things in life, my ability to love others, my tolerance of others, my insight into the problems of others, my concern with the welfare of the planet, my understanding of what life is all about, my concern with ecological matters, my conviction that there is life after death. And it goes on and on and on. These were all strongly increased. They had uh, five different choices. Um, increased somewhat, excuse me, strongly increased, increased somewhat, did not change at all, decreased somewhat, or strongly decreased. Now, let me go over some of the responses that were strongly decreased, okay? My, okay. Concern, with, my concern with material things in life. My interest in organized religion. My fear of death. My desire to become a well-known person. OK, hmm. so as you can see, these are tremendously powerful transformations that were taking place on individuals. Individuals became more spiritual. They became uh, more friendly to their fellow human beings. They became more ecologically friendly. OK, they were not material. All of a sudden they lost their material desires. They became more spiritual. They did not fear death anymore. OK. So from my perspective is let ET contact everyone in this world, you know, because exactly. if, if it's making such a powerful change among individuals, you know, let it uh, ring with everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that was one aspect, the tremendous changes that took place with experiences. Um, I personally have spoken with five individuals that were in uh, Bud Hopkins books. OK, I'm not going to mention names. You probably know, you know, maybe three of them. Mm -hmm. um, these individuals now are just like what I've just stated. In the beginning, they were scared shit of their excuse, me, excuse the French. They were scared as hell and traumatized by their experiences. But now they're like totally love and light and spirituality. They're reeky healers, you know, a, a total transformation. Um, what we found was that we asked the question, how would you categorize your first few uh, uh, initial experiences? 39% of these individuals said it was extremely negative. Okay. Then we asked the individuals, how would you characterize your last few experiences? The total opposite. Okay, only 15% stated as, as, as highly negative. Mm. Okay, roughly 85% of them were positive. So what you saw was over time, the perception of their experiences and the actual experiences changed over time. Okay, right. so there's a traumatic transformation. The other major found finding in, from our research study, and again, this numerous findings in here, but let me just highlight some of the more major ones, is that uh, the ET, quote unquote, I say ET, but what I meant is contact with non-human intelligence. The ET contact experience is in essence a paranormal contact experiences experience because um, individuals were having, for example, let me just give you a, a couple of examples, okay? 80% of these individuals we're having out-of-body experiences. Isn't that shocking? 80%. I'm telling you, yeah. Out-of-body experiences, okay? 37% of these individuals have had a near-death experience, okay? 76% have seen a ghost or a spirit. 67% have had a past life memory. 47% have seen and have actually conversed with a deceased person. Isn't that crazy? 47%.
You know what? I I don't think it's crazy. I, no. I think. <laughs> but what I'm telling you, Michael, you know? is you you go to a MUFON uh, uh, uh. conference and you hear some of those MUFON speakers or contact in the desert. You know the main typical speakers. You know the main names that are out there. Right. These people are totally clueless about this data. Yeah, you know okay. the thing. The thing is uh, that I I think all of the UFO research is mired in those basic fundamental occurrences like Roswell, like uh, you know Rendlesham Forest. All of these things that people have been reporting on and studying for years, they haven't been able to move past that for some correct, reason. Correct. For so they keep looking years, for answers. Yeah. For 70 years, they've been stuck in the mud, Michael. Yeah, you know, we absolutely. really haven't progressed much. You know, refocusing on Roswell for another 50 years is not going to tell you much. Yeah. But focusing on our data, for example, we've had 66% of the people have physically seen orbs. Not through a picture, but physically seen orbs, okay? 45% of these individuals have visited what is called, quote-unquote, the spirit world, okay? Um, in terms of... Um, uh, a medical healing, 51% stated that uh, this non-human intelligence has performed a medical healing either on themselves or a member of their family. 51%, we're talking thousands of people, okay? And so this is just in terms of the, uh, missing time. 1,345 people have had missing time, okay? Um, I could go on telepathic. Uh, messages, 68% have received telepathic communications. Hmm. Okay? Uh, again, this is not stuff that, and then I could have a breakdown in terms of the type of messages, telepathic messages, okay? Um, I, yeah, I why don't we, I, I'll, I'll tell you, break now, right? Yeah, I, I was going to wait till 56, but let me do it now because I know that, you know, I, I want to get that out there in a chunk and not have anything interrupting it. So, hey, guys, listen, uh, don't go anywhere. You're locked into the Starborn connection, and uh, we will be right back. But And let me just say this real quick, real quick. Um, you know, the KGRA archives are now free and readily available for download. Visit KGRARadio.com and click on the Archives tab on the main menu to gain access to your favorite show archives. Download and listen on demand from your desktop or any mobile device with the KGRA app. Okay, let's go to that break. Hey there, quick question for you. Would you be okay with more energy, more endurance, thicker, healthier hair, a better mood, reduced appearance of wrinkles, improved sleep, improved blood pressure and cholesterol profiles, improved vision, improved memory? Okay then. Well now, have you heard of Nature's Youth RSF? It's from the anti-aging experts at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. See, at Nature's Youth, they understand exactly what it means to provide top quality health products. And Nature's Youth customers not only improve their health, they know they're also providing their body with the right nourishment to maintain that peak performance and fight the aging process. If health, wellness, and nutrition are what you desire, choose Nature's Youth RSF. I did. You see, you're going to get older. It's just up to you how you feel when you get there. Get started today. Nature's Youth RSF. Simple to use, simple to order. Go to naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com naturesyouth.com. Hi, I'm Richard Dolan. When I'm not hosting my radio program, The Richard Dolan Show on KGRA, or writing new books on UFOs, I run a publishing company. I'm proud to say that Richard Dolan Press has published some of the most fascinating books available on UFOs and related subjects. They include Dr. Bruce McAbee's classic analysis of the UFO cover-up, David Marler's breakthrough book on triangular UFOs, Dr. Richard Souter's unique work on underground bases, and other classics by Grant Cameron, Chase Kletzky, and Dr. Bob Wood, not to mention intriguing works by Eve Lorgan and Laurie McDonald that deal with truly bizarre phenomena. I'm proud to publish such high quality and original works, and there are several amazing books about to be released over the next few months. Go to richarddolanpress.com to learn more. Today might be the day I drop out of school. Today could be the last day I try. My parents alone can't stop me. My friends can't even stop me. But you might be able to. With United Way, you could tutor me, be my mentor, or volunteer to just read with me. If someone had helped me earlier, I might not be struggling. And studies prove that kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. 
There are tons of ways people like you can help kids like me stay in school. And United Way is calling for you to be one of them. Because it takes 12 years to create a graduate. It takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between me becoming one or the other could be you. Make me a success, not a statistic. Take the pledge to volunteer now at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. We are the contact for alternative research topics. The Planet, KGRARadio.com. Hey, welcome back, guys, to the show. We're starting our second hour now with Ray Hernandez, co-founder of Free. Uh, and uh, I'm going to let him uh, pick up where he left off because, frankly, uh, this information is something that we really have. If, if you're interested in research or, or if you're just interested in, in a friend's experience, uh, it, it's good to know this data. I, even if you're, you know, an experience of yourself, it's good to know this stuff because, you know, uh, somebody walks down the street and uh, asks you – Hey, what's been going on? Well, I've been visiting blah, blah, blah. Uh, you have statistics to show them. Um, you're not alone. Okay, Ray. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Uh, before I go into some additional statistics uh, or statistical categories, let me revert back to this topic of consciousness. So mm-hmm. why Free is focusing on that, okay? Um, as, as you know, you've interviewed many – some of these individuals um, – I, I guess the, the the one that has appeared on your show uh, the most is um, the uh, Julia Sellers from um, mm. from Slovakia. Okay, uh, she and literally thousands of people all over the world uh, are having out of body experiences where they're going into you know seeming. Um, multiple dimensions okay and in their journeys in their travel they're having communications with non-human intelligence okay and i mean uh, bob monroe you know mentioned that um um uh uh, 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 uh has mentioned that um uh, uh, mr minosa who's the president of the international uh, uh out of body uh, research association uh, there's like five or six different individuals um, that uh, uh, that have published books on this phenomenon. Uh, there's this uh, German um, experiencer. Um, my goodness, I have another senior moment here. <laughs> uh, so it's going around, man. It's going it's, around. It's going around. <laughs> so it's uh, um, <laughs> um, so it's it's a. Uh, literally tons of books that are out there of individuals that are having out-of-body experiences going into other perceived dimensions and having contact with non-human intelligence and it all starts with them going out of their body seeing their body underneath under you know uh in their bed wherever they were before and 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 zooming out to these other realities okay we have individuals that are having UFO-related contact experiences, okay, thousands of them that we've documented in our survey study, that were being brought to other realities. We're not talking about a UFO ship and being examined, okay? I'll talk about that later on, you know, right, the typical right. abduction type of stuff. But we're talking about individuals that are brought consciously. This is not through lucid dreams, okay? Being brought to other realities. And then in these other realities, similar like an out-of-body experience, is having interactions with physical non-human intelligence, okay, in these other realities. Right. Uh, and that very few people know about. But we've documented these cases, you know, there are almost a thousand of these cases that we've documented in our research study. Um, in terms of um, the research study that was done on, uh, on DMT, Dr. Rick Strassman, okay, uh, 50% of the individuals that he administered DMT to had communications and interactions with non-human intelligence, okay? Uh, the whole peyote field and mushrooms, Again, fully documented people interacting with non-human intelligence. Um, um, let me see the, uh, 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 the the sightings of ghosts and spirits, communications with ghosts and spirits. Okay, now, if all of these things are true and accurate, and we've got you know 
thousands of people all over the world consistently saying the same thing in terms of out of body experiences, near death experiences, UFO contact experiences, et cetera, et cetera. What does all of this tell us about our reality? Okay. Okay. What does it tell us when you can go out of your body and see your body underneath you? Okay. Mm, right. With an NTE, you're going into another reality and people are interacting with this uh, high level uh, type of being that people associated as God, where mm -hmm. people are interacting with uh, their deceased relatives, all young looking, as a matter of fact, never anyone that's alive, always dead. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with the out of body experiences, again, all these experiences being very, very consistent. Okay. What does that tell you about our reality? Okay. So this is what we're trying to understand, Michael, okay? What is the true nature of our reality? And so what we're doing is we're getting the data from our research study, and we're incorporating what the experiences are telling us into the various theories of consciousness, okay? Uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell uh, and Dr. Rudy Shields, but primarily Edgar for many, many years, worked with numerous physicists to uh, establish this quantum hologram theory of physics and consciousness, which is a theory based upon advanced physics, um, that we live in a multidimensional reality, and that our brain um, interacts with um, information storage devices and our multiverse. OK, and that uh, that consciousness is non-local, that it doesn't originate in the brain. OK, but that the brain is like some type of uh, receiver or receiving instrument. OK, right. um, and so uh, in this article that's in our website, we go into all of those details of the physics uh, um, and of the information storage devices and also in black holes, Rudy's aspect of the information storage devices of consciousness and in the multiverse. So what we want to be able to do to that is the aspect of contact with non-human intelligence and the relationship of the multiverse and consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, th those aspects have never been uh, uh, presented in a unified format. That's what we want to be able to do, which is basically an advanced theory of consciousness. Okay. Yeah. And then later on, there's many, many individuals that have spoken about the quote spirit world when we die, where we go. OK, that we never die, that we're actually eternal spiritual beings. Same thing with the UFO related contact experiencers. Uh, roughly 90 percent of these individuals uh, believe that, that we are eternal spiritual beings. Um, uh, in terms of the numbers, um, uh, as I said before, close to 50 percent were presented, uh, were sent to the spirit world and have had interactions. They've seen what it is to die. Like my friend Alberto, um, he was actually, by one of these human-looking beings, he was shown what death was like. And he was told, you know, when you die, you got to go through the light. Don't go back. Don't linger around. Go through that light, okay? Uh, just like a near-death experience. Okay? He was shown a near-death experience while being alive by this physical non-human intelligence in front of him, okay? Mm -hmm. We've had – he's not the only one, Michael. We've had tons of people that were shown the same thing, okay? So what does all of this tell us about what is our reality, okay? What it tells us is that uh, everyone is totally clueless as to what they think it is. It's something so much more complex. Oh, and boy. that this whole aspect yeah. of UFO-related contact is one little sliver of it. And then the nuts and bolts ufology, those people are totally clueless, okay? Uh, totally clueless because Edgar told me, a very long time ago, he says, Ray, we know the equivalent of one grain of sand in an entire beach. And I responded, and Edgar, and that's just one beach, you know, signifying that that's just <laughs> yeah. one, that's just one universe. What a okay. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, and same thing with all of our researchers, you know, Kathy Martin, Mary Rodwell, Leo Sprinkle, all of these individuals, you know, the, they all acknowledge that we know almost nothing almost nothing about what really is going on. But yet, if you go to YouTube, you go to these websites, you go to all these Facebook sites, you have hundreds of individuals uh, acting like they know it all. Yeah. You know, they've got oh, yeah. all the answers. Okay. And you have all these individuals, experiencers like myself, when I had my initial experience, uh, you know, who do you go to? You know, I, I, I was never into these things. I never knew about these things. So you go to the internet, you know, you go to YouTube. 
And and it, it, it took me a while to realize that, you know, 99% of what's there is, is BS, you know? Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. But yet, yeah, but yet so many people get sucked into that, okay? And these UFO conferences, as you know, Michael, and, and you too, Julia, um, most of the people that go to these events are experiencers, okay? Yep, absolutely. That's right. Why? Because they're looking for answers, Okay. They're trying to find out what the hell happened to them. What the hell is going on? But by going to these UFO conferences, you're not going to get it, okay? Because of the type of research that we have done has never been done before, okay? No, they, they actually would do better if they went to consciousness seminars. Yes. Because all the people involved with, with consciousness have ET contact. Yes, the channelers. Yes. The... Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. I, I, I just went to one in uh, Orlando, um, and this person has been channeling, um, um, you know, a high-level being, just like your, your friend there, um, or that um, uh, uh, o- o- Oli, 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 yeah, Oli, yes. Oli. He was channeling a, a, another being, you know, by another name. And uh, again, people were asking questions, but there are literally thousands of people all over the world that are doing doing that. Uh, Tolik, uh, uh, this guy, um, uh, Ma- Barbara Masiniak, um, this guy, uh, um, goodness, another senior moment. Tons of people on, on Facebook and on the internet. Tons of people, yeah, yeah I have are, a few are, are that are doing I very, to. very similar work. So it, mm-hmm. it's it's all interrelated. Um, let me sort of transition now back in, into the data, okay? Um, one interesting point is that. Um, Almost all of the individuals that took our survey have seen a UFO, okay? It was more than 90-something percent, 95%. Now, out of those individuals, 61% of these individuals stated that there was a witness with them that have seen you with the, the UFOs. So these are not just experiences that, that someone is inventing these things, okay? Right. Like in, 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 in my case, uh, when I saw that huge, gigantic craft right outside my house, it was my daughter uh, and three other adults. And this is a huge, gigantic craft that was 30 feet away from us for 45 minutes. When my wife saw several UFOs in Mexico, it was all with her family members, and one of them was very close. The one outside her house, which is a huge, gigantic craft that she saw the windows, it was uh, her alone that that she saw that, okay? But that was her first sighting. But uh, our data reveals that if you're going to see a UFO, uh, the most likelihood is that you're going to have a witness with it. 54% of these individuals have deliberately called down a UFO, you know, CE5. Mm -hmm. So this whole CE5 stuff, it's not rare. It's not like you got to pay Stephen Greer 3500 bucks to see a UFO, okay? Oh, Lord, yeah. yeah. You, you go to the vast majority of experiencers, they have called on a UFO. Right here it says 54%. I, the first UFO I ever saw was the one I called, okay? But it was, I wasn't intending on seeing a UFO. I was just killing time, you know? Yeah. Uh, and But then once I got into it, I became, you know, um, you know, very uh, serious about it, you know, and lo and behold, 15 minutes later, this huge craft appears. I got a friend that lives about 10 blocks away. Um, he sees UFOs now over 50 times over the last six months, and it just started six months ago. Okay. Amazing. And um, so it's everywhere. It's all over the world, you know, the CE5 stuff. So it's 54%. Now, 58, interesting, 58% have called to see a non-human intelligent being. Interesting. 58%. Um, the people that have physically seen, physically seen a being, okay, 1,400 individuals. Wow. In phase, in phase two. Phase two is uh, roughly 2,400 people that have taken phase two. So roughly more than half of the individuals have physically seen uh, uh, an entity. Um, um, the other half have had contact but via telepathic communications or a family member has had um, the physical sighting of the being, okay? Um, 63% said that they had witnesses when they saw this being. Again, you know, most of these experiences, uh, even the the interaction with the being, the sighting, have had a witness. 72% of these people that have physically seen the being have interacted with the being, okay? 85% have interacted with these beings more than once, 54% 54% have stated that they have interacted with these beings more than 10 times. Okay? 
huge numbers. So if you're going to have interactions with non-human intelligence, 54% say it's going to be more than 10 times. Okay. Now, in terms of the type of beings, okay, I'm going to go over the type of beings that people have seen and how, what percent of them have characterized these experiences as negative. Okay. Okay. The, num the number one type of being is the energy being. That's at 54%. Okay. 6.7% said the experience was mainly negative. Small number. The number two category is the human looking being. That's at 52%. The negative experiences were only 5%. The small grays, if you go to the internet, they're all evil, dreaded small grays. 50% mm -hmm. <laughs> 50 50 of these individuals have had interactions with small grays. Well, guess what? Only 11.5% stated that these experiences were mainly negative. That's it, 11.5%. Okay? Spirits and ghost beings, 47%. Only 7% were mainly negative. The tall grays, 34% have had interactions with tall grays. Only 12.4% said that it was mainly negative. The evil dreaded reptilians, please, these got to be up in the upper 90s, right? You know, the negative yeah. experiences. Exactly. Well, one quarter, 25% of the experiencers have had interactions with reptilians. Okay? But guess what? Only 23% describe these experiences as mainly negative. Okay? The insectoid, the mantid beings, 21% of the people saw them, only 9.5% said it was a negative. Then the last two categories were the small animal type of beings, that was at 14%, and the tall animal type beings at, at 13%. And the uh, small animal beings, 6% uh, said it was mainly negative, and the tall animal beings, 9.6%. Uh, now, Overall, in terms of positive, negative, and neutral experiences, overall, as I said before, 85% of these experiences have been positive. 84% stated, please don't make my experiences stop. I want hmm. them to continue. So if these experiences were so evil, so dreaded, so horrible, why would 84% say that I want them to continue? Yeah, exactly. Okay? Nine. 0.7% believe that not, uh, these beings are bad or malevolent. 62% said that the beings have actually tried to help them. 62%. 71% feel an expanded consciousness in the presence of these beings. 66% have felt love from non-human intelligence. Okay. Now, we asked the question, how did ET, ET contact change your life? We had five different categories. Let's start with the most negative. 4.3% said it had a highly negative effect on changing their life. 6.7% was slightly negative change in their life. 16.5% said it was neutral. Now let's get to the positive. 21.7% said it was a slightly positive change in their life, in changing their life. Now here's the huge number. 51% said it was highly positive effect on mm. changing their life. Now let's talk about how would you characterize your last few contact experiences? And these were uh, focusing on the abductees. Okay? Okay. Remember I said before, when we asked your first few experiences, it was 39% said it was negative. Now, let's see how that 39% changed. Okay? Again, starting with the most uh, negative. Okay? 8.3% said it was a case of abduction, but of the most negative kind. Okay? Again. Okay. Eight, only 8.3. 13.6% said it was a case of abduction, but of a milder kind, a slightly more caring kind. Okay? 8.6% said it was still a case of abduction, but were seeking permission. Okay? They sought the permission of the experiencer. More humane, compassionate treatment. They were treated in a humane, compassionate way. Mm -hmm. okay? It was still abduction, but... They sought my permission and they trumped me in a humane way. That was 8.7%. Now, let's get into the huge numbers now. Okay? 35% said you are not an abductee, but a contactee. Mm. Where are you being treated with respect and understanding? Okay? Now, the highest category is 34.4%. It is a, it's a case of being a conscious contactee, an egalitarian, an equal relationship. 
Now, aren't those numbers mind-blowing? They really are. Okay. So we're not talking about interviewing one person or interviewing another person or a third or the fourth or the fifth person. No. These are now the, the people that have had physical contact with human intelligence is over 1,400 people. Okay. And they've just categorized their abduction experience. Mm. I'm, wonder, <laughs> I'm, one, yeah. one, I'm wondering one thing, though. You know, all, all we basically, uh, and I'm talking about the media, all we basically hear about are negative experiences. And I, I think that people consider the negative experiences more interesting to read or they like to – they like to be scared, and I'm not saying that in a funny way. You know, they they like the drama, um, and, and they just ignore the the positive aspects of it. And I think that's why the conceptualization overall by the average Joe out there who knows about the subject but you know doesn't really dabble in it. I think that's why they uh, they assume that it's all negative. Let me give you two responses to that. First of all, fear fear sells. You know that, okay? Because there literally have been thousands of experience or case studies in books where these experiences, they, they've talked about very, very positive experiences. But those books don't sell, okay? Yeah. Uh, the next point is that the people that laid the foundation for this field, uh, which was established as initially as an abduction field, okay, were David Jacobs, Bud Hopkins, and Whitley Strieber. Okay. Now, if you look at Whitley Strieber, Whitley is the typical person of this research study. Initially, it was horrible, traumatizing experiences. Now he sees them as angels. Mm -hmm. He's totally into spirituality. They've totally transformed him. His experiences now are deeply spiritual. They're bringing him into other realities, okay? Just like everything that I've mentioned here. Whitley Strieber is a classic example. But in the beginning, forget it. You know, these were demons. Yeah. So that's how this field was established, okay, as a purely abduction-related study, and it was all uh, negative. Now, let me talk about the abductions, okay? Uh, we've had many, many people that have had ab ab uh, abductions. Um, let me go over uh, the people that have had UFO contact but have never had an abduction, okay? 68%, two-thirds, stated that they have had contact with non-human intelligence but have never had an abduction. OK, 32 mm percent -hmm. said that they've had what is called, you know, typically called an abduction. OK, um, now out of these individuals, um, 605 people have been taken and relocated to another location. Out of those, 475 said that they've been taken not to a craft, but to another planet. OK. Got it. OK, now. Almost double that amount have been taken to another reality, okay, like another dimension, okay. My labs, uh, um, to only 12% stated that they've uh, experienced a my lab, mm -hmm. and those are the most traumatic type of these uh, abduction type of experiences. Now, let's talk about the uh, the alien breeding program, the abduction stuff, okay. L let me uh, uh, say that... Um, the most traumatizing type of experiences are individuals that have only had one or two type of experiences that uh, were the individuals that would wake up on a table being examined. Okay. Those are the most traumatized individuals. Okay. Now, there literally have been hundreds of individuals that have had that experience, but then later on, the experiences became positive. They were allowed to walk along the, around the craft. They were giving all these uh, messages, spiritual messages. They were allowed to fly the UFO. You know, um, they begin interacting with uh, other types of beings, human-looking beings, with uh, quote-unquote uh, spirit-related type of beings. Okay, so but most of these experiences started as a physical checkup, mainly by the Greys. Okay, now. The individuals that never had these additional type of experiences, those are the ones that have remained traumatized. Okay. okay. But if they've, if, if they've gone to support groups, if they've talked to other people, and if their experiences um, evolved into multiple type of experiences, then the vast majority of these people 
began to see that initial experiences as okay, I'm just being checked up, you know, right? Or or if they've had semen extracted or oh, you know, uh, were part of the alien breeding program, okay, you know, I was part of that program, okay. Um, let me give you just a, an example, an illustration, okay? My friend Alberto um, had numerous types of paranormal experiences in his youth, okay? Uh, when he was in his early 20s, he saw a huge uh, UFO right on top of him. Um, <clears throat> I won't say huge. It was uh, maybe the, the, uh, the 100 feet wide, you know? Um, and so uh, after that, for 15 years, he would wake up in the middle of the night paralyzed, and he would feel like he just had an orgasm, okay? Mm. Totally exhausted, okay? And then he was totally scared when he was like that, okay? And then um, uh, one day, um, uh, all of a sudden, um, the whole house started to shake. The windows shook. They thought it was an earthquake. The wife, uh, Rebecca, who I think you know, she's a PhD psychologist, uh, like, uh, like you yeah. are. She jumped on the baby to protect the baby, whatever. Then uh, she saw this little gray being very quickly, and then she got knocked out. Okay. Then all of a sudden, this being appeared in front of Alberto, this little small gray, uh, saying that uh, we want to thank you for giving us permission for extracting your sperm. Because what you have actually have done is you have saved our race. Wow. From, from extinction and uh, that remember that you gave us the permission to do this okay and we want to let you know that we're not going to come back anymore you know uh, so thank you very much goodbye you know and Alberto said that it was female definitely female the the being that told him all of that now after that initial he only saw this small great just one time it was after that initial experience that he began to have all these experiences with these human looking beings okay mm -hmm. most of them he calls masters okay because they would take him to other realities give him spiritual teaching spiritual training guidance and they were all dressed in white monks robes okay and um and uh and like roman type of of tunics so what, what alberto happened is very typical uh, they would have an experience with the gray. It was uh, related to uh, uh, the alien breeding program, which certainly definitely does exist. Okay. He was traumatized. Same thing like uh, Michael, uh, uh, Reverend Michael Carter. Okay. He right. was having very similar experiences. He was totally traumatized by all of this. Okay. But then what happened with Reverend Carter, his experiences began to change. He started interacting with more, you know, quote unquote, that he perceived benevolent type of beings. He started having teachings, uh, spiritual encounters, um, and he became very highly spiritual uh, from these uh, uh, later type of experiences. So that is the pattern that we saw, that uh, the number one category for negativity was the ontological shock that Dr. John Max spoke about. I mean, when you see a being in your living room, even if it's a Palladian looking being with uh, blonde hair and blue eyes, you're still going to shit in your pants, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And if it's a reptilian, you're going to be traumatized for the rest of your life, okay? Because it's, you know, eight or nine feet tall, you know, 300, 400 pounds physically. It looks ugly to so many people, even a little gray. You know, you have one of these grays that appears at your bed, you know, staring at you. You know, most people are going to be traumatized for the rest of their life, okay? So that's number one, the ontological shock. Number two is what the physical appearance. As you could t tell by the type of beings that I mentioned, the human-looking beings were very, very positive. The reptilians, most of the people, we read their responses of why they checked off that it was negative, okay? We read what they wrote. Most of the people, wasn't that reptilian uh, went off and raped them and raped their wife and ate their children and stuff. No, they were scared crazy because of what it looked like. Ah, uh, right. Okay? That's why they checked off it was negative. Not that the reptilian did anything bad to them. No. We haven't had one experience where a reptilian did something bad to these people. Okay? It was just they were scared shitless. Okay? And, and the number one type of negativity was people that woke up being perceived that they were being examined. And people that uh, um, remembered of semen being extracted or ovum. So that's... Um, that's the number one um, uh, category for the negativity. But as I said, most of these people were able to overcome that negativity because their experiences transcended. Yeah. 
Good stuff. Yeah. Michael, can I get into, let's say, some other categories, like, for example, spirituality? Oh, right? please. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Again, this is another topic that, um, you know, you are thoroughly familiar with. Uh, Julia knows about, is thoroughly familiar with as well uh, by, yeah. by speaking with many experiencers. But this is something that's never discussed by the nuts and bolts crowd. Okay. <clears throat> 82.5% believe that there is a connection between ET and the spirit world. 80, almost 83%. Okay. 89% believe that there is a connection between ET and the paranormal. 89%. 75.4% believe that there is a connection between ET and reincarnation. Now, isn't that interesting? Really? Reincarnation. Okay. Again, we know that because we talk to experiences all the time. 26% were given a message by, uh, when I mean ET, I mean non-human intelligent beings, okay? Right, so right. 26% were given a message about reincarnation by these beings. One out of every four. 31% were given a message about God. 30% were told by these beings about the death process, about the spirit world. Okay, they were told. It's not their belief. It's the actual being told them. This is what death is like. This is what the spirit world is like. And I utilize the illustration of Alberto, my friend, as an example. Okay, 25% were told by uh, non-human intelligence that they at what time were, in fact, uh, an ET. Hmm. Okay, how many times have you heard that before, Julia? Um, like a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot, okay. We hear that all the <laughs> We hear that, uh, like you, you, you're like, duh, right? I'm an ET. I'm Syrian oh. and Palladian. Okay. I, but it, I but came it, here to help people ascend, and that's okay. what they're telling them. That, that's all about reincarnation. Reincarnation, correct. Yeah. But if the nuts and bolts crowd will totally look at you like you're a crazy woman, you know? But oh, they here, already do. Who cares? <laughs> but here you have, you have 25% of these individuals were told by these beings, not that they believe. Right. They were told by these beings about reincarnation and that in the past they were an ET, okay? 58% um, believe that they have interacted with a non-human intelligent beings in their past life. 25% were told by non-human intelligence that they interacted with ET in a past life. So the, uh, this being told the human said, look, in a past life, we interacted together. Okay? That's really cool. Yeah. Yes, it's 38% um, believe that these uh, uh, entities are, in fact, quote unquote, modern angels. And my wife would fall into that category, 38%. 32% uh, believe that these entities can travel to the past and to the future. Now, isn't that interesting? That's very interesting. Okay. Because that's what we all believe based upon the information that we have received about their experiences. People have been brought to the past. People have been brought to the future by human intelligence, besides being brought to other dimensions. 90%, 7%, 97%, almost 100% believe that non-human intelligence can travel to other dimensions. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and you and Julie are like, duh. Right. <laughs> I know. But 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 again. But this, this is, is really important. There's a lot of people out there. Data from thousands of people. Right. Data from thousands of people. Okay. Um, Ninety-one percent believe that there's some sort of grand plan in motion, and that experiencers are all a part of it. Okay. Ascension, in terms of right? destiny. Yeah. I mean. It's a dimensional consciousness. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, other aspects. Let's talk about uh, medical exams and medical implants. Okay. Uh, as I said before, 51% of the individuals um, have had a medical healing. Okay. Uh, uh, like what happened with my dog? Both of you know that story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, my wife and the dog disappeared right in front of me. We were going to be euthanizing our dog because she was totally paralyzed. My wife was praying all night. All of a sudden, this energy being appears in our living room, you know, makes my wife and dog disappear in front of my eyes, um, um, puts a, a thought in, in my mind that what I'm looking at is not important. I wave my hand at it, and I said, ah, bullshit. This, 
you know, the junk that she got me up for, for this crap, you know? And I went back to bed and I fell asleep and 45, it, no, I not fell asleep. It put me to sleep. And then 45 minutes later, when I woke up, I was fully conscious. And I was like, holy cow, what the hell just happened? I ran down the stairs and there's my wife. Poop, she reappears again. And the dog is running all around the living room like a little puppy. <laughs> and, my, and and my wife is like, you know, uh, the angels cured her, the angels cured her, hallelujah, the angels cured her, you know. And so that type of scenario was duplicated, goodness, how many was? Over 750 times. Wow, yeah. Okay. Chris Bledsoe was cured of Crohn's disease. Okay. Reverend Michael Carter was cured of uh, of a blood clot in his leg. His leg was twice the size as the other one. Okay, he had just been released from the hospital. He was supposed to inject his leg with Comodin for six months. Okay, all of a sudden he had tons of pain. He started praying, and all of a sudden, this blue Palladian, uh, this uh, Palladian being appears right in front of him, opens his hand. There's a blue orb. The blue orb goes right into uh, his body. He begins to quiver and shake. The Palladian being dematerializes right in front of him. And then, like a minute later, he looks down. His leg is completely normal. Okay. Wow. This lady, uh, uh, Alina, uh, down here in Miami, same thing. An experiencer. She saw Gray when she was young in her bed. She's had many type of paranormal experiences. Uh, she explained that she had a shoulder injury, was in much pain, and she started to meditate. All of a sudden, this blue orb appeared on the other side of her bedroom. The orb came right in front of her face, like, like here, look at me, you know. Again, it's a blue orb, okay. The blue orb then went right into her shoulder, and she was completely healed, okay. And when I told her the story of Reverend Michael Carter, she was totally shocked with the blue orb. She goes, my God, Ray, I've never heard of that, you know, of a blue orb healing someone. And I said, I've heard tons of these blue orb stories healing people. You know, and it's only with a study like this that you're able to see these patterns. OK. Yeah. Um, now, 34 uh, percent of the individuals, as I said before, recall lying on a table and being medically examined. OK. 20 um, percent consciously recall receiving an operation. Alberto received two operations by uh, quote unquote uh, ET, okay? One was that um, he had uh, an injury and his um, retina was detached. He was gonna have surgery with a, um, uh, what do you call, ophthalmologist, okay? Right. Uh, uh, the, the couple of days after he had that injury, he woke up totally paralyzed on a table and his eye was this intense light on his eye, and he heard like a, a noise, tiki 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 tiki, you know. And then that lasted like for a minute, okay. And he was totally paralyzed, and then he was knocked out. They did it on purpose so he remembered that he was operated on, you know. Mm -hmm. And so he was when he woke up, all of a sudden he had perfect twenty twenty vision on an eye that he used to wear glasses with. Okay. Mm. He also believes that he has an implant that was put behind his eyes because one day he woke up um, and he had uh, um, he couldn't see all cloudy eyesight. So he went through uh, to an ophthalmologist and then the, some ophthalmologist said, were you exposed to intense light? And he says, no. He says, because you have two uh, perfect equilateral triangles in each of your eyes. Oh, wow. Okay. And it was after that that both eyes had 2020 vision. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, 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 so these types of surgeries, tons of people remember them being on a table and having a surgery, not just having your semen extracted. You know, most of the time is people are being exp in, uh, inspected, physically inspected. Like you would check up uh, an animal in a zoo or something like that to see if it's a, uh, got any diseases or anything like that so now um the the people that uh, uh in terms of the implants um out of those uh, 34 percent that uh woke up on a, on a table uh half of those believe that they have an implant and they state us where they believe it uh it's located uh 22 percent believe that the implant is in their sinus area 34 percent stated that it's in their head nine percent in their neck 11% in their arms, 9% in their legs. 
Um, and in terms of the, the number one type of being associated with these implants, 41% said it was the short grays, 25% said it was the tall grays, the 21% said it was other, another type of being, 18% said it was a human looking being, 10.8% uh, Point four percent said it was an insectoid, and then the reptilian was five percent. So the vast majority were were the grays. That was at sixty six percent. So that's in terms of um, uh, that. Uh, we also have um, uh, what the non human intelligence told them. Okay, um, <clears throat> twenty five said. 25% said that they told them of their mission on Earth. Okay, 25% were shown how to do energy work. Interesting. 21% were told that their DNA was unique. 41, 45% have reached an agreement with ET. Now, isn't that interesting? It is. Okay, 45% said, yes, I've reached an agreement with them. 30% agreed to be taken aboard a UFO craft. Agreed now, okay? 90% agreed to participate in the alien breeding program, okay? 28% stated that uh, non-human intelligence told them where they are from, okay? 41% uh, uh, shared information uh, that they were given. 55% were given a message of love and oneness. Isn't that interesting? 55% were given a message of love. 26% uh, were given a message about reincarnation, 31% a message about God, 19% were told that uh, non-human intelligence created humans, okay, 19%. 26% were told that they were upgrading human DNA, 30% uh, were shown the death process in the spirit world, 39% were given environmental messages that we're destroying our planet Earth. Um, on and on. Um, let me see some other uh, uh, out-of-body experiences, okay? Uh, 659 people have had contact with non-human intelligence while they were out of their body, okay? Um, 584 of the uh, said of these individuals said that they've encountered entities, physical entities, while they were out of their body. Uh, this could have been individuals that were taken to other planets, other realities, and that's why they say that they were out of their body. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, out of those, 45% were human-looking beings, 38% said other type, 35.6% said spirit-looking beings, 31% said short gray, and 15% said tall grays. Okay. Uh, 60 and uh, one percent said that this experience occurred while they were physically in their human body, so they were into uh, other realities, like a matrix type of reality, mm. but they were physically in their human body. Okay, isn't that interesting? Uh, mainstream ufology will not talk about that, but right. yet um, uh, numerous researchers, uh, uh, Fowler, Raymond Fowler, mm -hmm. with Betty Andreessen, uh, spoke about that same topic. Okay, um, fifty-six percent that in this matrix reality, their thoughts were sped up. Seventy-five percent said that their senses were actually more vivid in this matrix reality. Forty-nine percent stated that in this matrix reality, that time stopped, or that time was slowed down. Fifty-five percent stated that they felt united or one with the world, just like a near-death experience. Okay. 38% stated that they suddenly seem to understand everything about the universe. 83% stated that this experience was very real, as real or normal as speaking with a family member next to you. Mm. 393 people had an experience with a, a council, an ET council, that was comprised of different uh, types of beings. Again, almost 400 people. Okay, Alberto had that. Alberto's wife had that. And here you're talking about a PhD psychologist, okay? That yeah. was brought was brought to an <laughs> ET council meeting, okay? And again, no one knows about her because you know she's never been interviewed. Uh, you know, I just know them because they're very dear personal friends of mine. Um, let me see what else in terms of the nature of the type of beings, okay? Um, Thirty-five percent of the experiences know before 
these entities appear before them. So they know when they're coming because of the vibrations. 739 people have said that they've been paralyzed by non-human intelligence. 332 people have seen these beings with a light instrument in their uh, hands. 464 individuals stated that they have seen uh, these beings with a uniform. Again, almost 500 individuals stated, yeah, they came to me in a uniform. 51% of these were human looking beings. 24% said other. 24% were short grays. 22 were tall grays. 14% uh, were reptilians. And 7% were the insectoids. Uh, now, here's an interesting number. 423 individuals have seen uh, a non-human intelligent being with a monk's rope. Mm. Isn't that fascinating? 629 people have woken up in, in their bedroom with an ET looking over them, you know, with a non-human intelligence, not just the short gray. We're talking about all different types. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 673 of these individuals have actually touched them. 673 have touched them. Okay. Um, Here's another interesting number. 78% stated that non-human intelligent beings actually have a personality. Now, did you know that, Michael? I would imagine so, you know. I've heard okay. they have sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. Now, we yeah. asked whether they – also, we asked whether they've been playful with them, okay? 45% said yes, they have been playful with them. Isn't that fascinating? It really is. Okay, 56% uh, believe that non-human intelligent beings are with them most of the time. 47% believe that if they called uh, these beings, they will appear to them. 47%. It's like CE5, but CE5 for the being, you know? <laughs> right. 47%, uh, Michael and, and Julia. 82% that non-human intelligence, uh, well, I already stated, can travel to the past and to the future. And 97% said that they can travel into uh, other uh, dimensions. Now, um, uh, let me go over one last category. Um, and let me talk about um, uh, contact aboard a UFO craft, okay? That okay. also takes place. And it's not just contact of being examined and getting your semen extracted, okay? That's just a lot of BS that's circulating on the internet. That happens. But people get brought to the craft for so many other reasons. So let me go over them, okay? In, in our research study, we asked individuals to respond to our questions based upon, only based upon conscious explicit memory, not upon hypnotic regression, not upon lucid dreams. So 667 people said that they have had conscious memories of being of border craft. Okay. Um, the vast majority of 57% uh, of these individuals stated that they actually had contact with non-human intelligence on the craft. 48% said it wasn't with a short gray. 48% said it was actually with a human looking being. Mm. Now, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Okay. 44% uh, 44.6% said it was a small gray. 33.7 said it was a tall gray. Okay. But the vast majority, 48% was a human looking being. Okay. Here's a nice magical number. 163 people stated that they have been allowed to operate the UFO craft. Now that's okay. cool. Okay. 163. Almost all of them said that the craft is operated via their mind. Yeah, they're connected uh, telepathically, or the craft is uh, of uh, you know biological origin. That's what Part they say. Not. Yeah. That's what they say. Uh, the experiences have stated that the craft is a biological being and that it can be operated with their mind. Okay. Now, the vast majority of these beings, of these individuals, have been aboard a craft more than four times. Okay. 75% said that there were more than three beings that they interacted with on the craft. 195 were taken on a tour of the craft. 212 were actually allowed to roam freely aboard the craft without supervision. So if these are, you know, evil, dreaded, you know, uh, beings that are going to uh, rape your, your wife and eat your children, you know, 212 of them were allowed to roam the craft without supervision. That's amazing, yeah. Here's another interesting part. 41% that they have been aboard the craft as a child. Okay, 41%. 
Okay, half of these people, 48% said that the craft was alive. It's a living entity. 44% were told why they were taken aboard the craft. Okay. Now, the, the, I could go on and on with this data, Michael and Julia, but that sort of gives you an idea of, of the type of, of, of questions um, in terms of telepathic communications. Uh, that's another area that I haven't gone into. Mm -hmm. But but again, um, let, let, let me quickly go over that last category. 1,636 people have received telepathic messages, okay, from non-human intelligence. 1,010 have been downloads of advanced science and physics and technology. Okay, isn't that interesting? Okay. Yes, it is. My friend Alberto has had an experience which so many other individuals have had. Okay, um, and this was a uh, Ralph Steiner, who's a child prodigy um, uh, physics and mathematician. Okay, at the age of eight, he was doing advanced calculus and physics in his brain for entertainment. Okay, that's Ralph Steiner. Okay, <laughs> member of our board of directors. Um, he and Alberto and many of the people that took our survey had a very very similar experience. That is, uh, Alberto saw like an iPod tablet floating, okay, uh, uh, semi translucent in front of him, and then all of these physics equations which is scrolling down. Mm, wow. Okay. Uh, Alberto was telling his wife what it was during the whole thing. She couldn't see it, but he was seeing it right in front of him. He was freaking out. And he said that after a half hour, he just walked away because he was just so bored because he didn't understand any of it. <laughs> okay. He just walked away, you know, and he started laughing. I said, what the hell you walk away? He said, Ray, that was the most boring thing in the world. You know, <laughs> physics, physics right in front of my, my face for a half an hour. You know, that's it. I got bored, you know, <laughs> right. Can't Ross, blame him. Ralph Steiner had the same thing happen to him, except he understood many of these old, those equations, and he took out a pad and started writing, you know, a whole bunch of them down. Okay, which he later used as part of his physics work. Okay, uh, so many other experiences. Chris Bledsoe, people don't know about him, about that physics aspect of Chris. Okay. He doesn't like to talk about it publicly, and I won't go into the details. Okay. Um, but Tons of physics downloads, okay? Susan Manowich, who I think you might know um, from Boston, uh, she, she's also an experiencer, worked very closely with Dr. John Mack. Again, physics and science downloads. Uh, so many, many people. Um, Dr. John Klimo and Susan are actually writing a chapter in our book on individuals that have gotten physics and science downloads. Mm. Man. So um, maybe that would be a, a good transition to talk a little bit about our book. Yes. Okay. First of all, again, I want to repeat our website. Uh, our website is experiencer.org, O-R-G. Now, the title of our new book, Beyond UFOs, the Science of Consciousness in Contact with Non-Human Intelligence, um, has various components of it. There's going to be uh, an area that's going to have six chapters on consciousness. And again, these are going to be <clears throat> academic-related type of articles, but meant for the layperson uh, on consciousness. Um, Dr. Edgar Mitchell has an article in there. Dr. Rudy Shields uh, has an article. Dr. Claude Swanson, the PhD physicist from Princeton, is going to have an article there. Dr. Bob Davis, <clears throat> Dr. John Klimo, Giorgio Piacenza, and myself. Um, we're going to be having all articles discussing consciousness and how consciousness relates to contact with non-human intelligence and, uh, and all multiverse. We're also going to be having two of our academic research papers that we're going to be publishing in these academic journals. Okay, One is going to be uh, uh, the summary of phase one and phase two, the statistical analysis of that. And the second one is going to be the an analysis of phase three, which is our qualitative instrument. And that's being done by um, uh, Dr. John Klimo. And what we did is we took the top 100 cases that uh, took phase uh, three, and John, uh, Dr. Klimo, did a synthesis of these 100 cases. <clears throat> um, now, the rest of the book is going to have thematic topic categories. For example, Brent Rains, who you need to get on to interview him. Um, he's been working with experiencers and in the field of ufology and the paranormal, and he, he knows that these fields are, are interactive. Uh, 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 he's going to be writing uh, uh, a chapter about the history of the UFO contact 
uh, uh, paradigm and how it's changed over the years. Mary Rodwell is going to be talking about uh, the paradigm shift that's taking place, embracing the multiverse. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, the abductee versus contactee. You know what really is going on. Kathy Martin is going to be talking about the messages that experiences are receiving. Rebecca Hardcastle Wright is going to be talking about the psychological transformation that people are having. Reverend Michael Carter is going to be writing about the spiritual transformation. Uh, Dr. John Klimo and Susan Manowich are going to be talking about the science and physics downloads that experiences are receiving. Dr. Joseph Burks and Preston Dennett are going to be talking about the medical healings. Miguel uh, Mendoca is going to be writing a chapter on the ecological messages that experiencers are receiving. Rosemary Ellen Guiley is going to be writing a chapter on the Kundalini experiences. And Dr. Barbara Mango is going to be writing a chapter <clears throat> on the similarities between UFO contact, near-death experiences, and out-of-body experiences. And the most famous author on the paranormal, he's written over 200 books on the paranormal since the late 50s, uh, Brad Steiger, He's yeah, writing good. our conclusion. He he's been around for ages, and I've read so much of his stuff when I was younger. Correct. Well, he is eighty-three years old, and Whew. he's going to be writing the conclusion to this book. So this is going to be a, a book that's going to be uh, uh, totally destroy the whole paradigm of ufology and setting a new paradigm of consciousness and how to approach this phenomenon. It's going to be written in in um, an intellectual academic way but in a way that the average person can understand it and it's going to have numerous people i mentioned all these heavyweights there you know kathy martin mary rodwell uh, all these academic professors brad steiger um you know these are heavy duty people and they're going to be writing very very important chapters all of them relating to our research data and consciousness and that'll be released uh in may of 2018 nice very nice. Now, can you tell them where they can get the free book? Because well, I think we might get it out there. Yeah, that we have uh, the summary um, uh, of our free book. We have uh, like a five-page synopsis of it and a detailed discussion of each of the chapters in our free website, experiencer.org. OK, so you can read about the free book. You can read our academic articles. Uh, you could read um, the... Um, uh, the data, the actual summary data that I read out today, it's all listed there. This is for free for everybody here. And uh, we have numerous chapters on, uh, excuse me, articles on consciousness written by uh, many academics, uh, mostly physicists, but it's written for the layperson. OK, for you to be able to understand it, we have various articles on the contact modalities to see how that's related to consciousness and contact. We also have um, a support group. Uh, which lists all the support um, regression therapists, support groups um, uh, from all over the world. Um, uh, it has over 200 names in that list. So if you need some someone to talk to, some assistance, go to that support list. Um, so that that's our website. Re really, there's nothing out there in the internet. That sounds good. Really good. And, and you know, people, I want you to get the summary because, uh, you know, in a year, maybe two – Ufology might just be a very, very small section of the entire package that we study. There's so much more to it than nuts and bolts and medical examinations. Correct. It's, I it's, personally like, uh, uh, you know, I am not good with math and physics, so I like a layperson's explanation because mm -hmm. sometimes it's too complicated. A yeah. lot. So yeah. that's, you know, that's a good thing you did. I'll have to read that. Yeah, and, and the articles have different layers. Like some of them are a little bit difficult to read, but they're not for a physicist. That's for a layperson. Right. Okay. But there's other articles there that are very, very easy to read. And it's all different stabs at getting at to this topic of consciousness and how does it relate to contact and the multiverse. And um, and we're putting it all together, and that not as separate. We're we're unifying it as one, and then we're we're doing all on top of that is laying all that data on top of this, and saying, look, here's the data that supports this. Good stuff, man. I was just listening to Grant Cameron uh, being interviewed by George Nori on um, on Gaia, and yes. uh, he was just talking about this that the whole phenomena is consciousness. 
the whole Cor contact phenomenon. Oh, correct, correct. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If, if, if eventually, uh, my prediction, Julia, is that everyone that is involved in this field is going to move towards consciousness, including all the NDE folks, the out of body experience folks. Um, uh, most of the, the people, most of the people in the OBE field, it's, know it's, it's all connected. It's, it's yeah. all, it's all yeah. consciousness. They know and all that. the messages they're getting are about creating a heaven on earth, expanding to fifth dimension, a peaceful world, a, yeah. a world without money, mm. a yep. world. You yep. know, all these messages are what everybody seems to be getting. It, it, it's it's introducing the esoteric history, really literature. Right, of all right. these ancient traditions, all these ancient cultures, and and the esoteric literature that people have totally dismissed as metaphysics, whatever, right? But what it's doing, it's reimposing metaphysics on top of science. That's in essence what's happening. Excellent. Listen, I hate to I, I hate to say it, but we are out of time tonight. And you know, the problem is, and we have somebody like you on, Ray. Uh, time accelerates. Now, there's some consciousness thing going on there, too, I'm telling you, because uh, <laughs> the two hours flies by. Um, I'm so happy you could be here tonight, and I want to thank you. Thank you out there for listening to the show. Uh, we appreciate your listening every week, and sometimes, uh, you know, our producer, Bill, connects us to uh, YouTube, and you can hear us there, too. Uh, very, very nice package tonight. Ray, I will be in touch. Julia, have a great night. Bill, Good thank night, you everybody. For, thank you for all you do, thank Bill. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Bill. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone. Okay.